What's going on YouTube, Brad Vapes here. Today we're going to be checking out our second gizmo. This time we're going to be checking out 24mm gizmo. It's going to contain a lot of like similar information uh, than I included in the 17mm gizmo video uh, because they are pretty much the same device besides the fact that it is 24mm. But uh, there are a few differences with this one including like the etching and the button and stuff like that um, which I've mentioned in the close-ups. So uh, yeah, rather than sitting here and talking about it, uh, we'll go straight down to the close-ups. Okay, so this is the 24mm gizmo close-up, and as you can see, I have got the Brad Vapes writing engraved on here, which is thanks to Ishi, the guy who makes these, which uh, oh, I just think that's so cool. I mean, having my name on my very own mod, that's just, whew, never expected that to happen. But yeah, so we're going to go down to the specs. Um, this is the 24mm version, which means it's going to fit anything below 24mm in here, like any 24, well, any any tanks less than 24mm, so it'll fit like, let's say, 23 and smaller. And the tank which I've got in here is a Russian 91%, and you can see that that fits in there perfectly fine. And if you're wondering why my Russian looks a bit different, I've just got a uh, frosted uh, tank on there. And as you can see, that fits in there fine and it's got a tiny gap going all the way around as you can see i've got mine in red but you've also got the option to get it in black blue green plain aluminium which is obviously a silvery color uh the red which i've got pink and orange and this finish is an anodized finish Um i can't tell you how that's done uh, i was never really too smart on the whole technological making side of things uh but if you know what anodizing means, then it's an anodized finish. The body and the base are made out of, <laughs> I mentioned this in the last uh, Gizmo video, the 17mm uh, one, um, but they're made out of certified 6082T6 grade aluminium. Uh, and it's also a solid billet of aluminium, so it's not gonna have any lines where two pieces have been molded together or anything, cause it's, just, it's made out of one solid block. Um, and the button itself is made out of brass uh, and so are the rest of the contacts throughout the whole device and the grade of brass is C2121 grade uh, brass I think that's what it's called um, it might be CZ121 um, I can't remember which one it was but one or the other and if you know what that means then that may be important to you but uh, I'm really not sure how important that information is but you can also get a 303 stainless steel button uh, but I chose to get the uh, the brass one just because I think it looks nicer and also with these brass contacts including the button uh, the contact strip at the bottom and the 510 connection you're going to get a minimal amount of uh, voltage drop which uh, is important when vaping because I mean these batteries are 3.7 volt batteries and let's say you were getting a high voltage drop then the power you might actually be getting from your battery could be somewhere around like 3.4 volts or maybe less or maybe more but Basically, it's just making sure that you're getting as close to that 3.7 volts as possible. You've now got the option of two different buttons, and as you can see, this is the uh, the larger profile one, this is the lower profile one. And on the larger profile one, you can see there, on this section here, there's a hole going through it, which is just another vent hole. Um, but you've also got this minimal sort of looking one here, where it's more flush with the rest of the, uh, the button's body, um, but I can't see any vent holes on there. And even if I take it off, um, I, I just can't see any vent holes around there. Um, whereas if you look at the other button, you can see here there is a vent hole on the side. So in my opinion, that's one thing that they shouldn't have done. I think they should have kept that vent hole. But obviously having a hole in the side of your button, it's not going to look very nice. So that's probably just what they were trying to avoid. But just to prove the uh, both buttons will work, uh, I'm going to use the other button. I'm going to screw this on here. And you're going to see that that goes straight down and it works just like the other button would. But uh, I personally prefer the smaller button just because this sticks up a lot in comparison. As mentioned before, you can also get these buttons in stainless steel or in brass. So you've also got that option. So you've got basically four buttons to choose from. The threading on the button is absolutely buttery smooth. It's, uh, it's flawless. There's, there's no bumps, no scratchiness, nothing. So that's perfect. And also the 510 threading is absolutely perfect. There is also, again, no scratching or anything. It just it goes straight up and straight down. And I've never had a problem with this atomizer getting stuck at all. It's always just coming up and coming down, and just there's been no problem there. 
below this bottom plate we have a uh, brass strip which is the contact for the battery uh, and the 510 which I would take off and show you but I have no screwdrivers to take these screws out which is how unprepared I am because I've moved to uni and that's what happens when you move to uni. If you look in here you'll be able to see the 510 connection and that is also a brass contact and the 510 connection has got a spring loaded pin which I would demonstrate to you but as I cannot take off the bottom plate uh, I can't really get in there to show you it but you'll just you'll have to take my word for it or you can check out my video on the 17mm gizmo which I do manage to take it apart and I do show you the spring loaded 510 but it's got the exact same mechanism in this one as I've mentioned before it's got a high quality laser etching um, which I've mentioned it's got my name on it including gizmo and the serial number so my serial number is hashtag which means number I think um, F41 so my serial number is F41 and if you buy one obviously you'll get a different serial number and yours won't come with the Brad Vapes uh, logo on there but uh, yeah so really high quality laser etching uh, I really can't fault it although it does look different to the etching on the 17mm gizmo this one I think it's done with a like a, a sort of a what is it called a CNC machine so this one's like drilled in whereas this one's a lot higher quality uh, although it is finer but it's done by a laser so the quality is a lot better uh, in my opinion I prefer this one over the one on the gizmo or uh, the 17mm gizmo sorry although this one is deeper uh, and it does stand out more I just prefer the way that this one feels because I mean you can't even feel it there and it's just a bit subtler and I think it just works better with the uh, the overall look of everything. Also each gizmo is hand polished um, which is pretty cool uh, because you know that you're going to get a like a hand finished device and I mean you can notice there are some little imperfections um, a lot of them will just be fingerprints um, but there are a few little tiny minor imperfections which really do not bother me at all but um, they are there, like there's little sections where there's maybe a little mark. It's not a scratch, it's just maybe a mark where it hasn't been polished enough. So literally getting out a polishing cloth and polishing it, that'll fix it up. But uh, other than that, literally the finish is flawless. Um, and the button itself, because I've got the brass one, brass does sort of, uh, doesn't patina. I think that's the wrong word because patina is for copper. But um, it, it patinas a little bit. You'll notice that the bottom part of the button is uh, darker the top half's light air and this button did used to be really shiny but now it's kind of starting to look a little bit more frosted but uh, that's just from use and you won't get that with the stainless steel button but uh, that's something that happens with brass but I think you can get a product called Brasso or something like that which you can use which basically just polishes this back up and brings it back up like new um, but I personally I don't really I don't mind I just th I think it looks fine either way um, and also before each gizmo leaves the factory or the building where it's made uh, they are all hand tested uh, so I'm guessing they'll put a battery in put a voltmeter on there or maybe even put an atomizer in there and just test everything out and make sure it's all working so that just means that if you do order one it's not going to arrive to you broken you are going to get one that's going to be working and because it's been hand finished and made pretty much by hand apart from the actual cutting of all the metal um, and the laser action you, you basically you know you're going to get a high quality product which is going to work the second it's on your door and the second you slot a battery in there and as for batteries uh, in here right now I have the battery which is included I think yeah so basically you are given uh, a battery oh well you're given the option to order a battery or to purchase a battery with the device uh, and this is an eFest V2 battery it's a 1100 milliamp hour IMR uh, which is 3.7 volts just like every other uh, battery out there but the only batteries which will fit in here are 18500s and the only ones that I've tested are uh, well button top nipple top I don't really I don't know what people call them these days but um they've got the little buttons on the top but if I quickly get another battery um, you're gonna see that uh, I've got a uh, what is it Sibeli a Sibeli 18500 which is also a nipple top and just to prove that it works as well I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to use this battery for the rest of the review um, so yeah basically that's everything that I can cover it uses any atomizers from 23 millimeters and downwards and yeah I'll talk about what I like and dislike and then I'll tell you whether or not I think it's worth the air uh, I think it's 89.99 that you have to pay for it I may be incorrect about the section where I spoke about being able to get it in black, blue, green, 
plain red, pink and orange because I've just checked the Nature Vape website and as I can see there is only a black, an aluminium and an orange one available but uh, in the future there may be more colours available or this may just be what they have in stock at the moment. Um, so my red one may just be a one-off but uh, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, just if you want to buy one, go and have a look and see what colours they've got available and just choose from the selection that they've got because the silver one pretty much will look good with anything. Uh, the orange one is similar looking to the red, but obviously it's orange. And the black one also looks really nice. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. So now we'll go to the next part of the video. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what I like and dislike. But first, I'm going to see how it vapes. Um, so basically, this is a freshly charged battery. Uh, should be reading out about 4.2 volts. Um, and I'm running a 1.40 microcoil inside of this Russian 91% and I'm using an organic cotton wick and yeah we'll see how it vapes so as you can see it's producing loads of vapour um, but that's always down to your coil, your atomizer, um, the resistance, the PGVG ratio of your liquid, uh, how charged your battery is, all that sort of stuff. So if you get it, it's not going to perform identical to how mine's performing unless you're using the same liquid, the same atomizer, the same coil, the same wick and all that sort of stuff. Um, but for me, with the setup that I've got, it's performing amazingly. Um, I loved the... Uh, the I love the 17mm uh, version, but the only flaw which I mentioned was the tank size because the battery outused the tank, so basically I could refill the tank and refill the tank and the battery would still be going. Um, but with this, the battery sort of lasts the same amount of time as the tank. Um, when my tank runs out, I take the battery off, put it on charge, and then put a new battery in, fill the tank up, and then I'm ready to vape again. And that'll last me the full day, or sometimes, because I haven't really been vaping as I haven't really been chain vaping as much as usual, so I've been getting maybe one and a half, two days out of a tank. So, I mean, this is perfect for me, and it's still got that small hand size to it, um, which is what I loved about the uh, the 17mm, because it's really small, fit in your hand. But as you can see, it only sticks out a little bit here, so there's not really much difference. And that is the weirdest pose that I've ever done on a review. Um, so there's not really much difference there, um, which for me is a good thing, because it is a stealth mod. It's meant to be small, it's meant to fit in your hand, and that's exactly what it does. Um, obviously the battery life's the same, because it uses the same uh, 1,100 milliamp, yeah, 1,100 milliamp, 18500s, but I mean, you may be able to get higher milliamp uh, batteries, uh, 18500 batteries, but um, the two that I've got are 1,100, and one of them is the battery which you can purchase with the device, and that's been lasting me plenty of time. Um, and the tank fits in there fine, it's not wonky, it's not loose, it's secured down, it fires every time. Um, and this new button which they've uh, included, I, I much prefer it to the old button because it's flush when you're using it. And I sort of use it like a grenade, um, like the trigger trigger button thing grenade, is that the right thing? I don't know, like a detonator, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, you use it like a detonator sort of thing. Um, and just, it fires every time. Like, I don't know if you can hear this, but it's it's firing every time, which uh, for me is sort of a big deal because when I use other devices, I press the button and I take a drag and I pull away and then I'm like, oh, there's no vapor there because the button's had a misfire or it's not quite connected with the, uh, the battery properly, but you're not getting that problem here at all. Um, again, similar with the old one, obviously you've got to uh, include this little magnetic piece on the battery which uh, it just goes on top and that basically does just repel the button which I did not show in the close-ups which I apologize uh, about but basically it just repels the button uh, and if you want to see that in action then again check out my 17 millimeter gizmo review because I may have left out a few minor things in this review that I may have included in the other review so you might want to go and check that out but if you feel like I've mentioned enough for you to know whether or not you like this device, then that's cool. Um, but yeah, so it fires every time. And this minimal button, like it, it sits flush, and when you press it, your thumb kind of goes into the button, 
like into the sort of the dip and I prefer that to this one where it just goes kind of it doesn't it doesn't really go flush the button sticks out and then it just sticks out a little bit less when you press it and I didn't mind it at the time but now I've tried this button I do really really prefer this button and uh, like I've mentioned the the laser engraving is really high quality um, I much prefer the laser engraving to the sort of what looks like CNC grave, uh, engraving on the 17mm. Uh, um, also the fact that I've got a serial code uh, so I know it's an authentic device which that's like always a nice thing to have there and the fact that it's got my name on it that's just super cool but obviously yours isn't going to have my name on it or I, it probably won't have your name on it but I mean you might be able to inquire about that and pay a little bit more and get your name put on it if that's what you want to have done. Uh, but don't hold me to that, that may never ever happen, but you could always ask Ishi, uh, which is the guy who makes these from UK Vapors, it's I-S-H-Y, that's his username. Um, you may be able to ask him, you might be able to sort something out for you, but like I said, don't hold me to it, it might have just been a one-off for me, um, but I love having my name on it. Um, like I said, the finish is flawless, apart from a few minor bits where maybe a little bit more polishing could have been used but obviously you can do that polishing yourself if it bothers you but it doesn't bother me and the the button does tarnish um, which may be a patina sort of thing going on but uh, I'm not sure that's the right word like I said patina is something which happens with copper um, but you can use a thing called, I think it's called Brasso I might be wrong but uh, you can use some brass cleaner and that will clean that straight up the only flaw that I can think of is when I press the button a little bit of vapour does come out the side um, but that happens no matter what device it's on but that vapour is kind of settling and condensing inside the bottom so I've kind of got to take the tank off when I want to clean it and get like a cotton bud or something in there it's a little bit of a hassle to clean but uh, if the only problem I can think of with this device is cleaning it then I really like that's perfect like if the only flaw about something is cleaning it then that means it's pretty flawless in my opinion um, <laughs> But that's really all I can think of. It looks great. It works great with any 22mm atomizers. Or if you do have a 23mm atomizer that are also fit in here. But uh, I'm not really aware of any 23mm atomizers out there. And I haven't got any so I can't really test that theory. So I'm just, I'm guessing since it's a 24mm version the 23mm atomizers will work. Um, but other than that it's just a perfect device. Uh, actually one more flaw that I can think of is this gap here between the button and the uh, the tank um, it, it sometimes gets dusty and I can't quite get my finger in there so I've got to take the button off and wipe it with my finger um, but again if cleaning it's the only problem that I can think of then this device must have no flaws and actually one more one more minor minor flaw obviously because these are magnetic buttons like it's a magnetic switch sometimes you see there I got it on first time but sometimes the switch is a, a little bit more difficult to get on than other devices that aren't magnetic uh, switches but um, really not a flaw, it just takes like an extra 5 seconds to get on um, that's really all I can think of saying like right now for this video um, I can't flaw the device, uh, I've loved using it literally since I got it, the day since I got it which is a few weeks ago now um, I've just never put it down um, it's definitely my uh, all day device and I don't think I'm going to be putting this one down for quite a while. Um, it's just there's nothing I can flaw this device about apart from cleaning and the magnetic button being hard to put in. So definitely check it out. I definitely think it's worth the $89.99 just because of the quality and because of how much I've used it and how I can't put it down and just how nice it looks and just I think it's the perfect little stealth mod. Um, and it's a stealth mod which has got a huge tank capacity and that's kind of rare these days. Um, like I've got the Gizmo 17 and I've got the oh, the, the Runt by uh, Lazy Dave. Um, like they're all stealth mods but they've got small tanks and this is a stealth mod with a huge tank. So for me that's just a win-win. Um, so yeah, that's all I can think of saying. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Got any questions? Leave one down below in the comment section. Uh, or to the side if you're using a tablet or something like that. Um, leave a like if you've liked the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I hope you have a nice day. So uh, I'll see you guys later.